Let's make an experiment. Make a, a fist. Left hand or right hand, doesn't matter which one. Take the other hand and press really hard. No, one, two, three. Take the hand away and try to move your fingers. Is it easier or more difficult? Most likely it's more difficult, right? So this is what happens to your eye muscles. When you stare into the computer for the whole day, or you read a book, or you do homework, your muscles, your eye muscles, lock into that distance or from between you and the book or the computer for the whole day, for the, as many hours as you're reading. So, of course, the muscles, they, they stress, they get stressed, they get locked, and they lock into position. And this is the beginning of nearsight. If you do it with glasses, it's even worse. So we have the cornea, which is actually the most powerful part of the eye. It is responsible for no less than 80% of your focusing ability. And this is what makes laser treatment possible, by the way. The lens inside the eye is responsible for 10% only of your ability to see. And the fluid or the jelly that fills the eyes, the biggest part of the eye actually, is responsible for another 10% of your focusing ability. So the lens is actually the smallest part of the whole visual system. We have four muscles at the front of the eye, they're called recti muscles. We use them to move the eyes up and down and sideways, left and right. And the two uh, oblique muscles which are located at the back of the eye is used to turn the eyes in and down, like when we are reading. So you can see the, the horizontal muscle here is the recti muscle and at the back to have, we have the two uh, oblique muscles. So what happens is that when you're turning your eyes in and down, there is a pressure that develops and the eyeball becomes slightly longer. And every millimeter that your eyeball is longer equals 300 or 3 diopters of myopia. So we're talking about very minute changes that has a huge impact on your eyes. And if you read a lot, if you spend a lot of time doing near work, which children in Asia does, then this is encouraging the eyes to constantly stretch backwards and you become nearsighted. And we're talking about just microns of difference make a huge difference in the eyes. The eye doctors or the optometrists are working out from the Helmholtz theory of focusing. This is actually the illustration that Helmholtz used for his paper published in 1855. Helmholtz says that your focusing happens when the muscle, the cilia muscle contracts, it becomes smaller. So now when the muscle contracts, when it becomes smaller, then the stress on the lens is relaxed and the lens bulges out, it becomes thicker. The eye doctors and the optometrist assumes that the focusing of the eye is done by the flexibility of the lens only. This is the whole thing that makes this focusing work. And of course, this is fairly limited because you know when you're walking, you're not just using one muscle, are you? You are using many muscles in a combination or in order to make yourself move. And this is more like a functional part of it. There's, there's, the brain is giving instructions to different parts of the body, different parts of the muscles to contract and stretch and relax and whatever have you in a certain sequence that enables you to walk. The same thing is probably happening with the eyes. So we have a functional theory of the vision and of course, the functional theory allows you to train the eyes. So if you're just looking at the Helmholtz theory, then training of the eyes is not possible. Therefore, most likely your eye doctor or your optometrist will say, oh, don't be silly, eyes cannot be trained. Because they can only be refracted, it can only be corrected with putting lenses in front of the eyes. And this is, of course, the whole thing about optometry. Optometry is the science and art of uh, correcting your vision with glasses.